like a bird in prison I dwell No freedom from my sorrow I feel But Jesus came and listened to me And glory to God He set me free He set me free Yes, He set me free And He broke the bond Say amen. I'm free. I'm free. Thank God I'm free. Let me get um, Jesse, if you would, come sing Stand Still for me. Been a while since she's done it. Love the song. Good song. We'll get her to come sing it. I don't know if it's up there, Jesse, so I might have to look you up on the, is it, it is on the screen, so.
Did an excellent job. Good to have this family walking back in through the doors. Good to see them this morning. Been a while since we'd seen y'all. Sure was good to have you in service this morning with us and back tonight. We do appreciate y'all being here. Uh, and I don't know why everybody wants to sit on this side, but we, you know, we got a whole nother really good side over here. And folks smell pretty and everything. I know Senior's sitting over there, but he won't hit you. He doesn't even care that cane anymore. It's okay. <laughs> Stand still, even in those storms. I'm glad I know the master of the wind. I ought to make her sing that song right there. How many love the Lord? Amen. Amen. All right. I'm going to tell you what Brother Alton told me. Y'all can take it the way you want to take it, but I know I'm going to tell you what the boss said. He's my boss, I'll tell him. And Brother Stephen can tell you, I was going to put it up on the screen. I got capability that I can put my phone up on the screen, but there's too much business that me and him takes care of with text messages that I can't show you text messages. It's nothing bad. It's just business. It's just business that me and him takes care of, that mine and his conversations that mine, for mine and his eyes, with business wise. But, but he said this, take your time. Preach slowly. So I'm going to do what he said to do. Take time and preach slowly. Brother Melvin said, keep him awake. So I might get over and pick him up and walk back and 
Amen. Like I said, I, I mean, honestly, I, I, I love the Lord. I do. Sing this with me. And, and, and sing, sing this. How many knows that he's been good to you? I know, I know we're going to get hurt, Melissa, to sing that song. But sing this song. God is so good. Sing it. God is so good. God is so good. He's so good to me. Sing it again. God is so good. Yes, you are. God is so good. God is so good. He's so good to me. Sing this. I love him so, I love him so, I love him so, he's so good to me. How many knows he's answer prayer? Sing it. He answers prayer. He answers prayer. Oh, he answers prayer. He's so good to me. Amen. He's good, isn't he? He's a good, good father. Amen. Well, I'm not going to keep you long, I promise. I, well, I say that, but I am a Davison, and we do preach long. But, no, but I am I love the Lord, and I'm glad I'm here, and I'm glad I'm at church tonight. Yes, I really am. I, I'm glad I'm not at home. I, I'm, gonna stop, I'm glad I'm not at a, in a house with a parent, bunch of p- drunk parents. Right. I'm glad I didn't grow up in that. I'm going to be honest with you. I feel sorry for the kids that does that. And being in kids' ministry, and, you know, I, I deal with most, some of these kids that come in, us as Wednesday night workers, we deal with a lot on Wednesday nights, too. And, and so we have, there's, <laughs> we had to send one of them home for a heat, for one of them. I mean, he went from here to here and hit his sister. And I'm talking hard. And we had, we had to send them home. And so, and send them both home. And so we had, a, we've had it rough on Wednesday nights, but, but we got to, no, hey, listen, if you're, if you're really not going to pray for these kids, don't say you're going to. Don't go, or am I right? If you, if you say you're going to pray for these kids, pray for them. Because if you say you're going to pray for them and you don't pray for them, now that's just the judgment upon you. I'm saying that ain't have nothing to do with my message, but. That's just the little rabbit we just had to go. You notice I was having to take everything off of here. I have ADD really bad. And so I would pick it up and touch it and throw it. and So I, had, I have to move and clear, out, clear it out. But I'm going to talk today, uh, tonight about one little thing. How many has got joy? We got joy. Um, I got a little question I want to ask you. Where is your joy? Where is your joy? I've, I've, I've heard a lot of people say, well, I've lost my joy. I've lost my joy. I, mean, I, I, I honestly could tell you, a month ago, I about lost it. My joy went away. I had to put them in the ground. That's where I had to lay them. Because I'm telling you, my daddy was... It was something about me and Daddy. I, I ain't, don't want to get on crying because I'll be doing this the rest of the time, but my Daddy, man, and I, I thought, man, Lord, how in the world am I going to get up and preach and get up and teach and get up and sing and do all the things that I'm supposed to be doing? And how am I going to keep going on and working? How am I going to keep my joy? 
and keep my joy. And how am I going to keep this thing going? How am I going to encourage people? You know, that's, that's what we do up here. We're encouraging you. That's what we do. We're, we're lifting up him. And we're also in, trying to encourage you. But us here that's up here, we can tell you, the ones that's up here trying to encourage you, we're probably more broken than you are. We probably have more issues than you have issues. I know some of you probably got more, way, way more worse issues than I do. But some, I, I, there's things that breaks me down. Things that gets me where, whew, I don't know how I'm going to word them. And that was one of them. Doing that, bearing my daddy was the hardest thing I've, that I've ever had to do. <laughs> you got to forgive me because this is the first time I've done this. Since, um, But if you was at the funeral and you heard, oh, my friend of mine, my best friend in the whole world, Stephen Abney, get up, and he said this about, he, he didn't know what was going on the day he called us at the hospital. My daddy just passed away. Just passed, and we we're all gathered around. If you were at the hospital, you know, man, we had a time at the hospital. I mean, we were shouting and singing and and we was, we was praising him all the way into heaven. I mean, we were everything. It was the greatest, it's one of the greatest moments of my life. And my friend Stephen called me. I grew up with him. And, and um, he, he called. He called us and he said, hey, I just want to call you and tell you that I love you. And, and he, didn't know, he had no clue that daddy, I mean, we're talking a minute, two minutes or somewhere or another that he called he said, I want, I want to read y'all something that I wrote. And I wish I had it. I, wish, I, I should have got it from him, but it was good. And the whole thing is, it says, just keep doing what you've always done. And that's, that's my daddy. My daddy. My daddy was one of them that, that's, that's it, no matter what, just keep doing what you've always done. No matter, don't quit. We ain't got no time to quit. Just keep on, keep on, and keep on. My grandmother always told us, his mama, you've heard me say things about her, and one of the wisest ladies I've ever met in my life, she'd always tell us, when you're, when you're down, you're broken, and you've got to get doing what you're supposed to do, she said, wash your face. Go wash your face, meaning get the look off your face, and do what God called you to do. Keep doing it for him. Get the look off your face. Wash your face. Let nobody see that you're hurting. Because if you're hurting, you're letting people, you're going to get discouraged, people. And so, that's what I'm doing. Yeah. Just keep doing what I've always done. Yeah. And that's where all this came back to me. Psalms 51 and verse 12 says this, Restore unto me the joy of thy salvation. Yeah. This is David saying this, Restore unto me the joy of of thy salvation. Have, have the cares of life and, and the chaotic conditions of, 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 our, of the world and, and the things that's happening today and all this stuff is going on, and, um, it, it, sometimes it causes us to lose our joy. It kind of lose our joy, but it, it really don't lose that joy of salvation because that, that right there, what happened today, would want, make me work harder and want to make me work more for God to see more of them get saved than any time. We can pray with the psalmist right here. If you restore unto me the joy of thy salvation. First of all, we're going to look at the pardon of sin. The pardon of sins. And it says in Luke 51 and 10, there is joy in the presence of the angels of God over one sinner that repenteth. Over that one sinner this morning, they said one got saved with all that chaos that was happening this morning all that one got saved this morning and you know what they said there was joy in the presence joy in the presence it, hey it's not just joy that, that Jesus is rejoicing and it's not just that the angels are rejoicing David's your mama rejoicing it's my daddy rejoicing it's all of our loved ones gathered around going to somebody come up and say there were more this morning there was one more this morning and they all start rejoicing because there's joy in the presence of angels 
of one sinner. Just one. One. It is say a multitude. They just get happy about the one. Just that one. Now, can you imagine all the ones that we've had? Now, we, we've had a lot saved. Y'all realize we've had a lot saved this, this year. We've had, we've, that's, the one, that's great this year. Me and Brother Alton, we, we sit and we talk downstairs, and I know y'all probably think that's probably all we do is just sit and talk. But we actually do work. But, we, we, but most of our time of us talking, it's, it's planning and it's doing all this stuff and, and, it's doing all, and it's talking about the church and it's talking about what we want to see for the church. And, 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 his, and his, um, his heart has been at the beginning. I could tell you, I wish I had a recording. At the beginning of the year, every, at, the ones that's been here can tell you that's been in there. We sit in offices and we, and we can tell you that this is what we want to see done for the year. He said, William, I promise you, I want to see more souls saved this year than I've ever seen saved. He said, I want to see the ba I don't want to have to put nothing over the baptism because I want it every week. Every week, I, he said, I don't care how much the water bill is and how much it is. He said, well, whatever we have to do, I want to see people baptized. I do too. I just want to see that, that stirring of that because that, that brings joy. That brings joy not just in heaven, but that should bring joy here to us. Down here below, um, in our hymn book, page 309 in our hymn book, there's a hymn called The Healing Waters that says this, All the joys of the sin forgiven, all the bliss of the blood washed know, all the peace achings to heaven where the healing waters flow. Forgiveness brings freedom from bondage of sin. Forgiveness. It also brings that bondage, uh, that frees us from that bondage of, uh, of sin and, and, and from our guilt and, and from the fear of judgment. But where is the joy of pardon? The joy of a pardon. Now, I got to see that not long ago about a little, not, not so much a pardon like, you know, at a jail thing, but... We got to see, witness something that of, of, of forgiveness. Of something that somebody got to be let go of something. Y'all almost, do y'all know my daughter, my dumb daughter, sitting right there that's squishing, you know, it's kind of going down in the pew over there. She got caught going 98 and a 70. That's probably the dumbest thing. I mean... Can't get too mad. I, I've, have I done it before? Yeah, I've done it before. I've probably gone faster than that. And I never got caught, but she got caught. <laughs> but we went into court. Somebody told us, and I thank you. I, I continue, Brother Mike. You've been, you was a lifesaver to that one. Yeah, I'm, I'm always in debt to you on that one. And so I went to, we went to a lawyer before we went in. And he said, he said, tell me everything what just happened. He said, hurry up, we got to go. You know, he's one of these law. He said, come on, tell me what happened. He said, 98 and 70. That was stupid. And he kept writing. He said, that wasn't smart. He did, kept writing. And he said, How, this is what we're going to do. I'm going to get in there and this is blah, 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 blah. And he goes through there. We, he said, come on, let's go. So we took off and we went in there. He come in. He said, look, this is what I got you. This is what I got you. You're not going to lose your license. Thank you, Lord, for that one. That's what I told myself. I don't care how much fee is. Just don't, don't let her lose a license because she's in college and, and all that stuff. I said, and he said, this is it. This is what you got. We don't have to see a judge. We didn't have to stand before a judge because of this. We didn't have to stand before that. We never didn't have to do that. But it just kept coming back to me about the time that... I knelt down at an altar, and I came to know him as my personal Savior. I had somebody, somebody. I didn't, he, I didn't, we didn't have to go before him, but he did. The, he, got, he went up before him and said, this is what we got. Well, this is what's happening. And we didn't have to, we sat back and just sat there and watched him. We sat there and watched him argue. We sat there and watched the lawyer argue. He argued back and forth. He said, no, this is what I want. The guy said, no, you better walk away now or I'm not going to give you that. And he goes, okay. 
you know. And he comes back, this is what we got. I have one that went before me. That went before me that I didn't have to do nothing. I didn't have, the only thing I'd do, just believe. That was it. Believe. Asking and believe. That's, that was it. But he went before and I, and he pardoned me of my sins. Resentments and, and, and guilt, neglect of God's word, and, and, and overwork caused a lack of joy. Have you ever been there, just been so overworked? Just been so overworked with, with your jobs and the joy of your job. You know, you, how many members when you first got your job that you loved, it was the greatest job in the world? You know, I still got the greatest job in the world. I don't care what y'all say. I love my job. I really do. I'm not saying that just because, but I really do. I enjoy what I do. I, I'm, I bless God every day for what I get to do because I, 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 I've done harder things. I've done rougher things, and I've manual labor things, and I'm thanking Jesus every day. You know, that I'm not out there crawling on my knees and, and doing all that stuff no more. And God's blessed me with what I've got. And you ever remember that when you first got that one job that you, you loved, that, that joy? Woo. You're like, woo, I got to call your mama and go, you ain't going to believe what I got today. I like, got this job. And the more you go on and the stress of it, and the more of the stress of it, and the more of the stress of it, and the more of the stress of it, that joy left, didn't it? And Dave can testify to that one. The joy left. It's just that overworked. That overworked. And we get to that point where we're just overworked. So that joy, it just goes away. And we, with that lack of joy. And, but when we lay these, our guilt, and we lay all these things that we have, and, 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 and listen, neglect of God's word. Neglect of God's Man, you want to go without joy. And have, find out that you don't have no, and you feel like your joy is going. Back up, think about something, and just go back and go, how much of God's word am I reading? How much, what is my prayer life? I know we have a lot of things in life that just stuff, just stuff. We all have just stuff in life. It just happens. And a lot of times we, and we, we think we get so but a lot of times it's going, I found myself stuff myself and all this stuff and all this stuff that I've been going through. You know, I, I really haven't been reading God's word like I should be. My prayer life hadn't been where it should be. But you know what really usually happens? I find myself when I get myself back to that and I start praying and my prayer life gets better and, and all these things gets better and and and, and everything and that's going on and, and I start praying and start reading my Bible more and I realize how much of God's word I am neglecting to read and, and all this and I, and I realize well that was kind of where my, my problem was because a lot of times and, and believe it or not um, you, you do know the world and the news thinks that you're crazy as you found out this week that you have a mental problem you do. You have a mental problem. I mean, that's what they said. That's what they said because we, we talk to God and, and he talks back to us. How many, how many, now listen, how many has heard from him? How many has heard from him? Now I'm going to tell you this. Somebody told me, they said, somebody said this one time, they said, we was in call, talking in a conversation, they said, you know, I, I've never heard God speak to me in an audible voice before. I've heard people say that, you know. I've heard God come down and say, brother, you know, you know. But I've never heard that personally. I've never heard that before. But it's happened before. I'm not going to say it could not happen again, <laughs> you know. But we do hear. That's what the world messes up. I and mean, that's where they get messed up. This is where we hear from him. This is actually, this is what um, our vice president's talking about. We hear from him. I hear from him. I hear from him. 
And you say, well, I want to find my problem. Well, a lot of times you can find it right here. You can find your problems right here. He said, well, I don't have no joy. Well, there's a lot. I'm just to give you a lot of scriptures on joy. I'm just to give you a lot of them. And there's a lot of scriptures on joy. Well, I can't find my joy. Write these down. They're going to be on the screen. Write them down. And you can find joy where God's trying to get your attention to tell you something about joy. We neglect his word, and we, and, we, and we get, like I said, overworked. But when we lay these humbly before the Lord and pray, here it is, restore unto me. Restore unto me the joy of thy salvation. Second Peter, first, um, first chapter and verse 8 says, Ye rejoice with joy. And what does it say? Unspeakable and what? Full of what? Glory. Ye rejoice with joy, unspeakable and full of glory. Second of all, you find the purity in spirit. And Acts 13 and 52 says this. And the disciples were filled with what? Come on, it's right up there. See it? Yeah. The disciples were filled with joy and with the what? And the Holy Ghost. Filled with the Holy Ghost. Filled with the Holy Spirit of God. Filled with Him. Filled with Him. And the disciples were filled with joy. Having joy unspeakable and full of glory. Christians' um, joy depends upon a total commitment to God. He said a total commitment. Yeah, it's a total commitment. It, hey, if you're going to have real joy, you cannot just halfway do this. You cannot halfway be a Christian. No, to have full joy, I mean talking about to the brim. Y'all see that the other night when Brother Alton was walking around here with a full, I mean it was full to the brim. I'm talking like all 100%. If you want 100% of joy, you need to be totally committed to God. Your commitment to Him sold out. That's right. Sold out totally to Him. No holding in reserves of certain favorite, favorite possessions or, pers or pursuits. No. Hey, now I've had things in my life where I, I'm now I'm telling you, I'm preaching, I have, I'm preaching about, I'm, I'm preaching to myself. So, and so I have to, you know, I'm, while I'm doing this, it's like, you know, the, you have point one finger and you got three pointing back, you know. And that, that's where I'm at. In my life, because I, I'm telling you, I told you at the beginning, I thought my joy was going. I thought my joy was gone. And my possessions, and I've, hey, I've lost possessions. I've lost things. And I'm in, in my 38 years, almost 39 years, I've lost things that I thought that I could not do without. And things that I thought that I needed. And things that I thought I could do myself. And God goes, no. No, I can, I can take them away from you. I can take them away about as fast as I gave them to you. But you know where I was at? I wasn't totally committed to him. Brother Joe, I wasn't totally committed to him. And in his work, oh man, but I was getting up every, every week and every weekend praising him and singing praises to him and singing on, doing concerts and and doing these singings at churches and, and singing in revivals every week and doing over 250 dates a year. And, and that's what we were doing and, and, do, and preaching in between all that. And we're, this is what, doing all that work. Man, I thought, man, we got this going on. You know, this is going good. But, it's, but with all that, putting on that little front, putting on that little front just to, I, I got to go help other people. But you know what I was doing? I was deceiving them. Not only was I deceiving them, I was also deceiving myself. Deceiving myself. Now, we're talking about joy. Y'all remember? We're talking about what? Joy. Remember, that's where we're going. Joy. We're going somewhere, all right? Complete surrender to God releases us from worry. It takes all, I mean, to complete surrender. God holds the future, and he holds us. And, and the responsibility of our lives belong to Him. It all belongs to Him. Our responsibility of our life, it it's, uh, belongs to Him. Now, it's, it's up to us of what we're supposed to actually do with our life. But He gave us life. He's the one that gave the life. But if we want total joy, guys, we need to be totally committed to Him. 
and now we had a meeting back here in, for Sunday school, Brother Joe, and, and if we won't really see something, and you said it before, we've got to have everybody participating. If, we're do, if, one, person's gonna, if one, person, one person cannot build a Sunday school by themselves, am I right? Brother Joe cannot build this thing by himself. It takes a group of us. Us. Even, if, even us, that's, even you that are not teachers, it still falls on you. Am I right? It still falls on you. It ain't all about the teachers and the, the teacher, the superintendent and all them. It ain't just about us. It also falls on you. How committed do you want to be to God? How committed do you want to be to God? Now, we can talk about prayer life and our reading time, but no, we're, but you get down to Sunday school, and you're going, oh, yeah, I don't know about that one. I don't know. Y'all hear it get quiet? Yeah. <laughs> I know some of you, I know I've, some people here were preaching to the choir, you know, like we said, you're the, you know, the kind of the core people. But still, there's probably some of you that don't come to Sunday school. You don't, you know, if you're in that age, the 20 to 40, I, you know, I do have a Sunday school class, and, you know, if you want to come in my class, I mean, I've already stole a couple of them from Brother Joe already, so took some out of his class, but if you want to come to my class, you know, we meet down there in that back hallway, you know, they call Mrs. Holly's Sunday school class. We meet back there, and we have a pretty good class, so if you want to come, Dave is my assistant, so if I'm not here, you get to hear Dave teach, so Great Sunday school class. All right, anyway. That didn't go good with Brother Joe. Brother Joe's getting aggravated. But, hey, coming to Sunday school, totally committed to him. That's what we're talking about. Totally commitment to him. If you want joy, don't just get in here and just show up for Sunday morning at 11 o'clock. And show up here at tonight at 6 o'clock. Thank you for coming, by the way. And like I said, we're going to tell Brother Alton we had to put out chairs and had to put out... <laughs> We had to put out chairs and, and had to, you know, sit out. For, we almost had a crusade crowd, you know. Almost had to take it to the stadium. And so, but if you want totally commitment, don't just, don't just show up on Sunday morning at 11 o'clock. Hey, don't just show up at 6 o'clock on Sunday night. Hey, here's a big one. Show up on Wednesdays. You know, <laughs> show up on Wednesdays. Wednesday. Hey, you know where I found most time, um, where I found a lot of good stuff from the week was on Wednesday nights. Brother Alton didn't tell me. This wasn't in that text message that he told me. This wasn't in that text message. But hey, joy. We're talking about joy. Total commitment. Not just on, not just on Sunday mornings and Sunday nights. We're talking about Sunday school. And Sunday school, sometimes... Hey, hey, and if you have the time and you have the thing, Bible studies and Bible things that, that's happening, we've got something for everybody. Anyway, it's, it's every, every night, we almost got something for everybody. It's a total commitment. How much of God do you really want? That's it. How much of Him do you really want? Acts 15, we've got to get going. Acts 15 and verse 8 says this, And God which knoweth the heart, Bear them witness, giving them the Holy Ghost, even as he did unto us. Verse 9, it says, and, and put no difference between us and them, purifying, purifying their hearts by faith. We see right here, the, and the third thing, we see the peace of soul. The peace of soul. And it says, Romans 14 and 17, the kingdom of God is not meat and drink, but righteousness but righteousness, peace, and what? Joy in the what? Holy Ghost. Today's world is seeking peace. That's all you want to hear, peace in the Middle East and peace in this. You know, we got a peace in America. And we, you know, they're trying right now. The Olympics are down in South Korea. And, buddy, they are, did y'all, the news is like, did y'all see the, lead, the leaders from South Korea and Kim jong whatever her name is, his sister and, and the Americans, they were shaking hands. Oh, they're, they're starting something. No, no, no. It's all an act. That's all it is. It's all an act. You know, it's like the, the politicians, the whole politician thing, you know, 
shaking hands and kissing babies, you know, like that, or shaking babies and kiss. I don't remember, but <laughs> it's something like that. Shaking hands and kissing babies, that's it. <laughs> yeah, you'll get that later. <laughs> Some of you will. Yeah. But today, we're seeking peace today. We're trying to, to attain serenity and our security with power. Man, everybody wants power. I mean, you, you, you turn on the news and look and watch about all these different countries. That's what every country wants. They want the power. They want to be the mega top country. We want, we want to be the power. That was the thing about going NASA, going to the moon. United States said we want to be the first because if we can be the first, we control, we control the sky. We control the, the heavens. We control it all if we can get there first. If we can get to the moon first, we control it all. We, then we can tell who gets to go up and what gets to go up because we want power, 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 and that's it. But, and we want possessions and pleasures. Human endeavors can never bring satisf satisfaction to the longing soul. Psychologists say that a man's basic needs are to the need to belong. The need to belong or the need for reasonable security. We need something that is secure. You know, we got our 401ks and we got all that stuff. Man, you know, Kim was telling me the other day, she said, she said, do you know how much I got in my 401k by now? And I'm like, she told me, I was like, yeah, we can retire for six months. <laughs> That'll be good for like six months, you know. And so, but we, we, we want that. We want that security in our life. You know, we want something that's going to that gonna get us through. Something that's going to get us to the end. Something that's going to get something. You know, you might have this and you might have this for your children. A future for your children and putting money up. I'm sorry to tell y'all to. <laughs> there ain't nothing there. <laughs> there ain't nothing there. If me and your mama go, yeah, sit down. If me and your mama goes, good luck. And so, <laughs> no, I'm joking. Here's a little bit, but it ain't worth living on. But we want that belong. We want that security, and we want that. But listen, listen to this, Christians. We do belong. We do belong. We don't belong to this world. You know, we're just, we're just here just for a little while. Just here just for a little, but, little while. But Christians, we belong. We belong to the King of Kings. We belong to the Lord of Lords. We belong to Him. Hey, we're not going to have peace down here. I'm sorry to tell you, it's not happening. Only peace that we're going to have is one day when, he, when we, he, we see him a coming. And we go to meet him in the air. And we get to spend eternity with him. And we get to have him. And we get to praise him. And we he get to say, angel, step back because I'm coming now. It's all, I'm, it's my turn. It's my turn to praise him. It's my turn to sing praises unto him. That's the only peace that we're ever going to have is when we reach one day and we get to see the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords face to face. He's the one that supplies all our needs, our promises of eternal life. We rejoice because in Christ we have a peace of mind. And so Philippians 4 and 7 says this, and the peace of God which, what? Passes all understanding shall keep your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. And the peace of God which passes all understanding, shall keep your what? Hearts and your what? And your mind through who? Christ Jesus. It, that's, the, that's, that's the peace. The peace of mind. You ever had, I wish I had a peace of mind about this. Oh, the only peace of mind you're going to have, and you want to get your mind right, you want to get your heart right, get the peace of God in you. And you won't get that joy in your heart and in your mind. Get that peace of God in you. Last of all, and I'm, I'm, it's a short and I'm done. All right, we find out right here, it's the power of service. Serve the Lord with gladness. Come, come, and, come before his presence with singing, Psalms 102. When Christians neglect and make excuses for 
for uh, flattery, refuse to, uh, to participate, performing in God's work, where is the joy? When, we, when we're not doing all that we're supposed to do for him like we just said, and we neglect and we, and we make excuses and we refuse to participate, when you're not participating in his work, where is the joy? Where is the joy? We, we asked y'all not long ago last year to sign up with cards and sign up with these things and, and do more for God. We want you to do... It ain't just because we need your help. We, we really we do need your, need your help, but we want something for you. That's what, that's what the preachers, that's what the pastors, that's, their, that's one thing that they're, do, they're trying to encourage you to get more of God. That's what he wants. That's what Brother Alton has preached for us and, and all the other preachers. He, they, they want you to get more of God. It ain't just come up here and just to give you something, you know, that, that, that this, is what my, this is my view on this. No, 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 no. It's preaching God's word and giving you something that you can get more for God. That way you can say, you know, I heard this before at a church that was at. This guy, this guy came up to the preacher, and, and the pastor told me this when these people left, you know, was walking out the door. He said, come in my office. I need to tell you something. This wasn't here. All right, it was back in Alabama. I can tell you the church in Alabama, Fulton, Alabama. I can tell you. And he said, oh, we're recording. Mm, they won't watch it. And so <laughs> these people won't watch it, believe me. But hope not. But um, he said, pastor, we're leaving. He said, Pastor, we're leaving. He said, I'm not getting fed. Me and my wife, we're not getting fed. And the pastor said, really? He said, yeah, we're not getting fed. He goes, okay. He said, you know, I've heard that before. Of people. He said, that's kind of the excuse when people are out the door. And you ever heard that, Brother Joe and Brother Melvin? You've heard that where people just said, I'm just not getting fed. And he said, I've had enough of hearing that. He said, I asked him, he said, this ought to have some, Brother Joe. He said, let me ask you a question. He said, all right. He said, how many times a day do you eat? He said, well, three times a day. He said, do you snack in between? He goes, yeah. So he said, so you maybe eat five, six times a day. Something in your mouth. He said, yeah. He said, how much do you drink a day? Like, you know, Tea, water, coats, and stuff like that. Not, I don't know. <laughs> he probably, <laughs> he probably, you know, you'll never know. But, um, oh, he's watching. And so, um, we're not going live yet, so, whew. And so, um, he said, so you're doing, that's, okay. How much Bible you read today? He said, how much Bible you read every day? He said, how much do you pray a day? He said, well, not that much. He said, oh, so you're telling me. He said, he said, I've always wanted to do this. He said, God just finally gave me the courage after over these years to finally do it. He said, so you're telling me. He said, but this way he said this. He said, so you're telling me that if you went without eating. He said, how many times a week do you read your Bible? He goes, he said, I can just go ahead and tell you. He said, you're only probably going to read it when I tell you to open your Bible. And he's like, well, he says, so that's one time a week because you don't come on Wednesdays, you don't come on Sundays, you don't come to Sunday school. He said, you rarely come on Sunday night. He says, so a week, you're only eating. He said, tell you what you want to do. Go home this week, eat one meal. This week, just one. One meal. Drink one time. Don't, 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 mess, don't, don't do nothing else. One time. He said, how long do you think you can live on that? in a year he said I'll be malnourished he said I know it ain't my fault it's your fault <laughs> he said you're spiritual malnourished he said you're spiritually killing yourself because you're malnourished he said he said so now what do you got to say about that one he goes we're still leaving he said I know you are he said I just had to get it out <laughs> <laughs> he said I knew you was leaving he said, but that's the truth, Dave. It is. And we, we say, to, we give it on the preacher. Oh, the preacher ain't giving it to me. It's, it's the preacher's fault that I'm not getting fed. No, 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 no. It's our fault. It's our fault. It's my fault. If I don't read God's word and I don't do what he tells, what the word tells me to do, 
I'm killing myself spiritually. I am malnourished. I'm, I'm not feeding myself. Hey, the baby, if, the, if you don't feed that baby, you think that baby will live? Because you know what? That baby can't. That's what happens to a lot of baby Christians, too. That's what happens to a lot of older, older Christians, too. And we're still, little, we're still babies. You know, we, we haven't got to that meat yet. You know, some of us is, you know, or you, I, I haven't been saved 40 years or 30 years, you know. And so, but some of you, some of you still, oh, come on. And so some of you probably still, after being saved for 40, 30 years, still not fully into the meat yet. Because we don't get enough of him. Now we're talking about joy. How much joy do you really want to have? You got quiet there. And, but we're talking about joy. Joy, joy, joy. Christians are endured, endued with the, by the Holy Spirit with the power for service. In doing God's work, we receive joy of the Lord. Acts 1 and 8 says, But ye shall receive power after the Holy Ghost has come upon you, and ye shall be witness unto me, both in Jerusalem and all Judea and in Samaria and unto the uttermost part of the earth. He said, Go, tell my people, tell the people about me. Tell, you know, that's one of the things Brother Alton can tell you. That, that scripture right there probably gets used in every Bible, um, every missions conference there is. And am I right? That's the one thing. Go into all the world. Go into Judea and Jerusalem. Go into the uttermost part. Go go these places. Go, 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 go. But you know what? He, we we want to send everybody else. I'm fine with sending somebody else. You know. Not me. No, I'm not saying that about me. But we are, as Christians, we're okay without sending a missionary to go out. But when it comes down to going, how many of you? Now, I'm, on, I'm telling myself because Brother Joe gets on to me. I make little tracks for Brother Joe to send out, to give out. And Brother Joe, I've been out with him. Every time he goes anywhere, he's like handing out a track. You know, he's, he's handing them out. Handing them out. He told me the other day, he said, you know, there's a couple misspelled words on there. And I said, oh, yeah, I knew that. <laughs> I knew that. I said, that way if they read it, and they, you know, yeah, that's why you know they're reading it. If they ever come back to you, do you know they're misspelled? Well, you read it, didn't you? You know. That's a lie, y'all. <laughs> 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 that's nearly not true because I misspelled some words in it. And so I have to remake them. But Brother Joe, and I'm not, I don't mean to get over here, but Brother Joe has a smile on his face, and he seems like he's into it. <laughs> And so that's where I go to it. And but we do. We tell we want to tell more people about him. And telling people about him. We're okay with sending people out in missionaries. We're all right. But when it comes to us telling people about the Lord, where's your joy? Hey, the the people that I have seen because I've witnessed to them and I got to see them safe, man, is that not something a feeling? That is not a feeling that the, the time I I've got to kneel beside somebody and, and tell them about Jesus and open the Bible and get to lead them to God. Lead them to God. It's nothing like leading somebody to the Lord. Leading them to the Lord, knowing that you had a little part in it. Knowing that you had a little something in that. Man, that gives you that Lord. You're going, whew, what is this I'm feeling? It's joy. Joy, joy, joy. And we're, we're at the end, I promise y'all. We're at the end. To know the Lord, to have assurance of our salvation, to claim His love and, and His promises, to serve Him. We'll, we'll go quick on this. Serve Him with our tithes and, 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 and to reflect His love to others. Now we won't we won't get on that because y'all y'all hear y'all hear enough about ties and that let's leave that to Brother Alton and 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 all these other the pastors and but this is where joy of salvation is found. I'm gonna tell you this real quick, and I've probably told it before. I mean, I can go back and tell you my story about tithing. I can tell you my William's story about tithing. My story did not end very well. Growing up in church, I've known church before I was here. I, I, I mean, I was, you know, that old saying, 
nine months before you know I was in the world, I was in church. That, that was weird. I've never been walk, one to walk away and say I'm done with it. Ever got in the world? No, no, that's not me. I've been here. I've been in church my whole life, entire life. So I knew what the Bible says, and I knew what the Word says, and I knew what things were saying. And hey, I knew what the Word said. I've heard about it, but me and Kim got married. We started having um, children. When we started having children, work got hard. When you're in construction, like I was, and we was in construction and, and doing work wasn't always, it ain't always a joyous thing, is it, Brother Mike, being a painter, is it? It ain't always a joyous, great, you know, greatest thing in the world. Good money when you make money, but, um, but things got hard. And I said, I've even testified about this, and, um, and, I've, and I've told, we got to pay bills. We got, got to get the, we got behind on our bills, and things going on, you have a child, man, we need this, and got to have this, and we find ourselves not paying our tithes. Not paying our tithes. Now, I know better. I am a son of a, of a ex-pastor, you know, and I, my, my granddaddy's a pastor, and and my great granddaddy was a pastor, and 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 my uncles are pastors, and you know I I I, I know the Bible what it says about things like that, but I didn't do it. I didn't do it, and so it goes on, and then it got harder, and things got harder, and things are, and work kept not coming, and not coming, and it just seemed like why ain't I getting no work, you know, why we're not doing this, and and. My stupidness didn't need, you know, not a V8 moment, you know, where you hit you, you know. So, and, but Brother Joe, I started losing things. I did. I started losing things. I had to walk away from a house. I lost a house. Couldn't pay for it. I got, was it evicted? Hey, how about that and hit you at about 20, when you're 22? When you're 22 years old, that's rough when that hits you. That's because I didn't pay my tithes. And finally, me and Kim was like, okay, we can't do this no more. <laughs> there ain't no way we can do this. And But you know, ever since, Brother Joe, we come to ourselves, you know, when we came to ourselves, and we said, had in a V8 moment, you know, he was talking, you know, and it came to ourselves, and it said, that's the problem. That was our problem. We started paying our tithes. And I've paid, I promise you this, with my hand up, I have paid my tithes as much as I can. I mean, not much as I can. I have paid my tithes because I don't want to go back to there. You know, I don't want to, I don't want to do that. And I, I seen my, myself living in a car, you know. You know, if it wasn't for family, William and Kim and a baby would have been in a car. Really would. Now, we're talking about joy, my, your joy. Now, I'm telling you where I was, but I'm telling you where I am now. My joy now, my joy now is a lot better off than what it was back then. Now, I'm not bragging on myself. No, because I, I, I'm going to tell you, because if you see my tithe check and see mine and Kim's tithe check, you would go, how are you living you know, I mean, really, I mean, no, you, some of you are the same exact way. How are y'all doing this? I would never imagine, Dave, that I'd have what I have. Never, never have. You've seen all the little signs that we got hung up in our house. Because God gave us things that we never thought we'd ever be able to do. Have the jobs that we get to do and to get to do and, and get to grow more. I get to grow more in the Lord because I'm here. I know, I know y'all probably jealous of me because I get to be here all day long with Brother Alton and and no, but listen, my wife gets to gets to move up and gets to work more in her job and, and gets to move up in her job like nobody else has ever done before. Only been there two years and she's moved up four positions. Now she has thirty people under her working under her and fixing the we're we're moving on up to the east. No, no, I'm joking. <laughs> but no, she's moving. And it's because we're doing what we're supposed to be doing. 
We're doing the work that we were called to do. We were called to do. We said, why in the world would my wife be working at a cancer hospital? She don't, never worked at a cancer hospital in her life. Now, she knows medical stuff. She not what she does. She knows it. But why would God put her where she's at? And tell you, we went to a revival, and I'm done. I'm talking about the service. And I'm, we went to a revival down in Roanoke. And the pastor found out his past, the pastor that was there, his wife has, has terminally ill. She has stage four cancer. And she goes to the cancer treatment hospital. And me and him got to talking. And I was telling him about my wife because Kim couldn't go with me because she was at work. And um, I get to tell him about my wife. He said, you know, I think I've talked to her on the phone. Because if you talk to scheduling, that's her department. And sometimes you're more likely, sometimes you're going to talk to her. And so, or somewhere around there, or hear about her. And so he said, you know, I think I've talked to her. So I've got off, I got out of church. I said, Kim, have you ever heard of so-and-so? She said, yes, I have. This woman's sick. She was in here yesterday. I said, you know, they said that she cannot eat and she cannot do this. And because, because she's so because of the medicine that they have her on, she goes, well, I'll talk to her doctor tomorrow. She went and talked to her doctor. And, they, and the preacher that was there preaching, Mike Ragland, he called me. He said, you know, he said, I don't know what happened. He said, but they changed her medicines. She's eating better. And she's doing, God put her in there for, for a reason. And he's putting me here for a reason. Things didn't work out like we thought they were going to do. Am I right? Here. But I'm going to tell you, God knew exactly what he was doing. God knew. God knows what he's doing. Like the song said that Jason Krabs got, God is up to something. God is up to something. God, we don't know what happened today. We don't understand. I know I've taken forever today. And I know God, but we don't know why, why that happened. God is up to something. Miss Tanya, God is up to something. God is up to something. Him. Phil, God is up to something. We don't see it today. God is up to something. We don't see it. We don't know about it. Hey, God is up to something. God is up to something, brother. We don't see it. We don't know what's going to happen. Pray for you every day. For you every day. I pray for you because I get to. I walk by downstairs and I get to see, I see the mission board, so I see you. And I see your, the pictures. And I get to see him. I pray for Brother Alton. And I don't know why you have to go through the things that you go through, what you've gone through, and, and the health situation, and the, and the other things with the mission, but God's up to something. He's up to something. Don't know what it is. I don't have a clue what it is. Sometimes I would like for him to go, William, this is my plan. Can, you get, can I get an amen? <laughs> I would love sometimes for God to tell me my, what the thing is, but God is up to something. Church, we don't know what's going on in the church, and we don't know what sometimes what people are facing in the church sicknesses and, and health situation, but hey, guess, guess what? God's up to something. And if we're going to have joy this year, now we're still at the beginning of the year, but if we're going to have joy this year in Westside Baptist Church, We've got to get totally committed to Him. This is where we're at. We've got to get totally committed to Him. Totally committed. Not halfway, not 50%, not 75%, not 90, not 99%. We need to be 100% committed to Him. Him. Him alone. Nothing else. Get the possessions out of your way. Get everything out of your way. Hey, if something coming in between you and God, you know, we, we call that... Sin, get it out of get get it out of your life. Get totally committed to Him. Where's our joy at? Where's your joy? Where's your joy? Is it in possessions? Is it in financial things? Is it is that where it is? I'm gonna tell you. I've learned my life. My joy comes from the Lord. My joy comes from Him and Him alone. And Him alone. I love my family. I love them. Totally. I, I mean, I would literally do anything I can for my family. I, I'm, I'm honestly step in front of a bullet for my children and my wife and my mama and my brothers. I would do anything I can to save their lives. 
to take them, I, whatever it takes to take somebody down, I would do it. I'd do it for you. And I, and I know we would, but listen, with that same commitment I have to my family, man, I have it for him. I would do, I'd do anything in my power to see more souls saved. To see more souls saved. To see more people come to know him. Because, man, that's what, like I said, that gives me my joy. As we stand, let's stand and let's come and sing a chorus of something. And I'm going to invite you down here tonight. As we're coming down, go ahead and start coming down this way. And let's do something that we don't ever do on Sunday nights. We normally just stand around and pray. No, hey, come on. Let's use the altars. Let's use the altars. And let's get down here and let's pray and ask God to break, give us back our joy. Now, if you can't kneel down, there's pews right here that you can sit. But come on, let's come down and let's get earnest with God. And let's get, let's get in touch with Him. Because we need, there's people here this morning. And there was something happening this morning in this service that somebody walked away and didn't know God this morning. That, the devil was fighting this morning for some odd reason. But listen, God was up to something. And let's pray. And this is going to be our dismissal prayer tonight. Find your joy. Find your joy. Where is your joy? Ask God to give you back your joy, to restore unto me the joy of thy salvation. Brother Dave, if you would, will you pray? Let her We let her, to you tonight. Yeah. Needy people, Lord, we need you more today than we ever had. Lord, to be able to carry on this work into the future, we need you. We've got to have you, Lord, for us to serve, to maintain that joy, God. We've got to have you tonight. Lord, we just desire to spread the gospel reach the community, reach the lost. What you would have us do, Lord, we, that's our desire. But Lord, we pray and ask tonight that you would help us be sold out for you, that we would see, God, what you want for us and not shy away from it, not say, oh, no, let somebody else, it's too hard, it's too difficult, but step up and say, it's me, Lord, it's me, I'll stand for you, I'll fill that gap, I'll be what you need, I'll be the servant that you need for me to be tonight, and I'm dedicating that to you, Lord. Help us all, Lord, to pray that, to mean it from our hearts, to expect and understand what's going to happen for us because of it, because the blessings of God will be opened up and poured out on these folks. Lord, if we just turn loose of ourselves and get a hold of you. Lord, we thank you, God, for what we've heard today, Brother Jimmy, this morning, for William tonight. What a, what a touch. Holy tonight, we thank you, God, for helping him and him giving us this tonight. We thank you for this people that came out tonight. Bless them, Lord, for their efforts. No, it's not always easy, but we pray, God, that you bless them for their efforts coming out tonight and being with us. Lord, and as we leave here, Lord, yes, we are going into a mission field. Help us to serve. Maybe it's to be like Brother Joe and pass out tracts. Maybe it's actually to open the Bible and witness to somebody and show them how to be saved. Maybe it's just to live a Christian life in front of them so strongly that that's the Bible that they see and they read and they realize they need what we have. Help us, Lord, to be that Christian, that servant, as we leave this place tonight. And as always, we'll give you the praise the honor and the glory, Lord, for it's all because of you. We ask this in your name tonight. Amen.